Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be taking on your questions and I will be answering in this video. If you guys do not know about the series, we are going to be doing these type of videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I will be choosing a total of 10 questions for every video that we do make for every week. And so if you guys do have questions, not just about FC Barcelona, but about football in general, just put your questions down below on these videos. Or if you want to, you can also post it on the community tab. And if you guys want to have priority all the time, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Friday, you can also sign up for the membership that we do have. And so let's get started. And let's talk about the first question. And it says here coming from Sandy Pani Ghost Gosh, I believe a 273. I don't know if I said that correctly, but that is basically his username. You guys can see it here. And so he did say firstly, on behalf of all true Barcelona fans, thank you for standing firm against the criticism and negativity, not just from our club's detractors, but even from some of our own fans, you have consistently supported and explained the broader situation, shedding light on the agenda working against us i'm certain we have managed to sway a few opinions towards the truth so thank you man i really do appreciate it thank you for those kind words that is part of the reason why i even made this channel to give more positivity right to not like be overly optimistic all the time but give more positivity more truth because there is sometimes positivity within the truth it's just that sometimes the media does not want to put that out there and always wants to shed negative light on this club but we are here to fight against it so starting with his first question he did ask what inspired you to become a fan of this great club. So I started watching football back in 2007. So I was only nine years old. I was really, really young. And I remember at that time, I was not really prepared to watch 90 minute matches. Like I was just too ADHD. Like I had too much energy and I couldn't just sit there for like two hours. So I started watching football through highlights on my laptop and through YouTube. YouTube was barely coming up. I think like YouTube was two or three years old at that time. And I was watching highlights of Ronaldinho, Diego Milito, Ronaldo, Xavi, Iniesta, all those players, right? When they were in their primes. Players like Ronaldo, Xavi, and Iniesta, actually, they were like in their early 20s. So I wouldn't say they were in their primes. But yeah, you get the point. I was a general football fan for the first two years between 2007 and 2009. I did not really have a favorite team nor a favorite player. But then came 2009. And I remember going to LA. I was only, I think, 11 years old or 10 years old. And I was going to LA with my father. My father and I were going on there for vacation. I don't really remember every minute because it was it was a blur. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, I was in LA with my father and my father decided to go to this small little store and surrounding that small little store i think it was like like la, la pulga i don't know if you guys know what that is but it was a, a, an area like that and so we went to this little store and there were i remember there were many people wearing red and blue shirts and i'm like why is everybody wearing red and blue shirts and keep in mind this was 2009 and so when i went in that store me and my father decided to watch a game which was manchester united versus fc barcelona which was the champions league final of 2009 once again i was young i did not know what was going on i'm like why is everybody wearing red and blue or why is everybody wearing white and red, which was Manchester United. So I remember watching that game and I'm like, wow, this game is exciting. Look how Barcelona is playing. Look how strong Manchester United do look. And then just out of nowhere, I remember Messi making a header with the ball, beating every defender of Manchester United. And those defenders were like 6'3", 6'4", and Messi was only 5'10", or 5'8", at that time. And I remember seeing Xavi Hernandez make that amazing assist straight to Messi. And I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. How does somebody that is so short able to beat a bunch of defenders that were like 6'2", 6'4", in height? How was that even possible? And then I remember Messi getting up, scoring that goal, taking off his blue shoe and kissing the blue shoe. And then I see Henry and Eto run towards Messi. I'm like, this is a great team. And this is a player that I do inspire to be like, because I was also short. Like I'm still short. Like I'm, I'm a guy that's only 5'5". Five five. And I knew I was going to be short. So I'm like, okay, if this guy can do anything at that height and to be that small, but still dominate the world, I was really inspired. And ever since then, ever since 2009, I became a Barcelona fan. It would be embarrassing if I was 25 years old and I chose, and I chose to be a Barcelona fan fan back in 2009. That would be embarrassing because then I'll be like, okay, yeah, I'm a glory hunter, but I was only nine, 10 years old. I had no real background. I was too young, but yeah, that's basically how I got into loving FC Barcelona. As for his second question, he did state, why do you think the Nike deal has yet to inject the expected revenue for the transfer window? Despite Barcelona's assertiveness in negotiations, if the funds materialize soon, who do you anticipate will be the signed to replace Lewandowski as he'll be 37 next year? So just to make it very simple, I know that it did seem like Barcelona were going to conclude the negotiations with Nike this summer, but things like this do take time. And especially when you are negotiating something that's going to take you 10 to 11 years, like this is a sponsorship, right? That will be locked down for the next 11 years, maybe even more. So it's very important just to give you an, a general idea on what type of negotiations do take place. They have to talk about the financial terms, the sponsorship fee, the contract length, the brand exposure, the marketing collaborations. How are they going to show themselves in front of the world? They have to negotiate perform performance clauses. They have to negotiate exclusivity and conflict of interest. They have to negotiate 
avoid licensing and merchandise in global and local markets? How do you expose yourself in front of Asia or North America? For example, what is going to be the social responsibility? There are many things. And of course, that, that's the reason why it just takes so long. But Barcelona will get it done. As for who do I think Barcelona will sign to replace Lewandowski? I have no idea. I do think, though, that a lot of it's going to have to depend on how good Ansu Fati does perform this season. Because let's remember who Ansu Fati was, how talented he was, how, and how good he was at the age of 16 years old. If everything went well for him all the way up until today, Ansu Fati would be a world beater, a world class player. But he is not that. And that is because of injuries. But I think that there is a chance that Hansi Flick could revive his career by placing him as a number nine. If Ansu Fati ends up being decent, like he's just solid, he's okay, he's not somebody extraordinary, not somebody that can take us to the next level, I think that Barcelona can go for two number nines in the summer of 2025. It could be Erling Haaland or Gio Guedes, a striker that we will be talking about later in this video. And I'm also going to be making a whole other separate video on this Sweden striker. Moving on towards question number two, coming from Seven Homani. With the next season being Laporta's last season before elections, how big do you expect Barcelona to go in the summer transfer window? Now, first of all, I would like to say that I don't think that Drone Laporta needs to make any convincing moves next summer to make sure that he does get reelected. I think that Drone Laporta has done a phenomenal job and I hope the socios do see eye to eye with me. And I hope that whoever's a socio that watches this YouTube channel, I want you guys to like really know this. And that is that Drone Laporta has done a great job. And let's talk about that, right? His first wave was through free agents and getting low players at low cost. His first wave consisted of Dani Alves, Adama Traoré, Luke De Jong, and let's just say also Eric Garcia. And in that first wave, we were able to achieve second place after coming from ninth place under Ronald Koeman. We also had great games here and there with these group of players. Then came the second wave where we have letting go of a lot of those players. Like for example, Aubameyang, Luke De Jong, Adama Traoré, Dani Alves was only there for like half a season or like one year. But then the second wave came in, Barcelona had some financial strength and we brought in Koundé, Lewandowski, Andreas Christensen, Gessier, and Rafinha. We were upgrading. We were not getting worse. And in that year, we won La Liga in a very convincing way. And up until today, those players that we have bought that won La Liga are still with us today. Gessier unfortunately left us early because of the financial constraints. But overall, players like Rafinha, Christensen, Lewandowski, Koundé are still here and they continue to be dominant. Moving on towards the third wave, we continued to strengthen our team by bringing in more of La Messia, something that we have been missing in the past 80 years. So we brought in reinforcements and now we're also bringing in youngsters. We're growing La Minimal. We're growing Kubarsi, Gavi, Balde, Hector Fort, Fermin Lopez. And now we do have Mark Bernal and Mark Casado. So I believe that Drone Laporta has been hiring the right people. We have only been getting better. And I think that once we go into the fourth wave, which will be in the summer of 2025, it is going to look very similar to the second wave where we are going to be signing some pretty big names, not like the Kylian Mbappe, the Halans, etc. But we will be signing competitive players, players who is going to cost us 60 to 75 million euros. And yes, there's always that chance that Drone Laporta can pull off a big move if he does want to. Maybe try and go for Musiela. Maybe try and go for Florian Verts. We will see. But the general idea that I want everybody to understand here is if Joan Laporta does not bring in a big time player in the next summer, it would not matter because Barcelona as a whole have been upgrading. Moving on towards question number three, coming from Harney Lamo Ans Ansa 7931. Again, I'm sorry if I said that incorrectly, but he did state, God bless you for birthing this great channel. My question is between these group of players, who will you choose? All things being equal with Barcelona getting back to the 1-1 rule. So this is going to be fun, right? He did have bullet point number one, which is Nico Williams versus Liao. I would automatically choose Liao if he is available and it is financially feasible. I think that Liao and Nico Williams are very similar players, but Liao is much more of a physical monster compared to Nico Williams. And I think that Liao also gives better defensive capabilities. Last season, Liao did beat Nico Williams in terms of blocks per 90, clearances per 90, headed clearances per 90, interceptions per 90. The only thing that Nico Williams did beat Liao in was successful tackles per 90. Now, I know that you may be questioning, Kevin, is this even important for a attacker? Yes, of course. When you play under Hansi Flick and when you are an attacker, you are the first line of defense. You need to know how to defend. You need to know how to pressure, how to tackle, how to intercept, how to anticipate. Liao brings better qualities compared to Nico Williams. Liao is also three years older than Nico, so Liao is heading towards his prime. So yeah, I will choose Liao. As for the next player, that is Gio Guedes versus Erling Haaland. Once again, I'm going to be talking about this player in a later video, but just to bring you guys like some comparisons between the two players. First of all, I would like to say that I think Barcelona should go for Erling Haaland first, but if they can't and they cannot afford Haaland at all, the second best option would for sure be Victor Gio Guedes. I mean, it's just insane, right? Because if you look at the last four seasons of Erling Haaland and Gio Guedes, Gio Guedes is really matching Erling Haaland's numbers. Like I'm being so serious right now. If you look at what Gio Guedes has done with Sporting CP back in the 2023-2024 season, he played 50 games, scored 43 goals, and provided 14 assists. That is insane, dude. Like that is a 
total of 57 goal contributions within a span of 50 matches. Last season with Erling Haaland, he played 45 matches, scored 38 goals, and provided 6 assists. And then currently right now, in the season that we are in, Gio Guedes has played 5 matches, has 7 goals already, and has provided 3 assists. Erling Haaland with 4 matches only has 7 goals, and that's basically it. No assists at all. And let's also look at the 2022-2023 season. This is where Erling Haaland was like really bringing in his prime. Erling Haaland had 52 goals and 9 assists. Really good, right? Within a span of 53 matches. And then we have Gio Guedes with 50 matches, 3 matches less than Erling Haaland with 22 goals and 12 assists. Yeah, I know that these numbers don't really match Erling Haaland's at all, but still, you can see that in the past previous two seasons, we can see that Gio Guedes is outperforming Erling Haaland. Now I know that there is other factors, of course, right? Because Haaland is playing in the Premier League. But then again, you can also say that Haaland has a better team around him. It's a well-oiled machine. But for sure, this is a player that I will go for first. Haaland, and if not, Gio Guedes, go all in for him and pay the 65 to 68 million euros that you need to pay. And then moving on towards his last debate, which is Alfonso Davis and Grimaldo, I would say neither because I'm very happy with Balde. However, Davis's contract with Bayern Munich does end in the summer of 2025. Could he be a player that Hansi Flick could go for and grab him up for free? So yes, I would go for Davis over Grimaldo because Barcelona don't have to pay a single dime for Davis. But if Barcelona don't go for either, I would be fine because we have Balde. Balde is a player that I do trust and I believe that Hansi Flick has great plans for him. Moving on towards the next question. There's a plethora of free agents next year. Some big names like Trent, Alfonso Davis, Joshua Kimmich, Jonathan Ta. Do you think we should be going for these players despite us using La Messia to great effect? We also need to work on the squad by integrating some big lucrative names. We have some unknowns in the squad, diamonds in the rough, but we need recognizability, no? So first of all, just to answer like your last question, it does not matter if we have unknown players or very known players. Yes, I know that if we sign a big time player, it's going to be selling more shirts, which means more money. But at the end of the day, if we want sporting success, we cannot look at players and say, okay, what's a known player and what is a unknown player? It does not matter. What you want to bring is a great competitive system where every player gets to shine. It wouldn't make any sense for us to bring in a recognizable player like, let's say, for example, Kevin De Bruyne, but he ends up not fitting in our system and he's just a injury prone. It just, it wouldn't make any sense, right? You cannot just say, okay, we have to go for known players. No, it doesn't matter. It could be unknown or known. That debate has to go out the window. But going back to your previous question, should we go for players like Trent, Alfonso Davis, Joshua Kimi, Jonathan Ta? I think that yes, they are great opportunities, but if something is broken, then don't fix it, right? Like I've said, if Bernal is performing well, then we should not sign a number six and we are also going to be having other options. If there is a position that does need some reinforcements and we cannot find it through La Messia, then you can bring in these free agents like Joshua Kimmich, Jonathan Ta, Davis, or Trent Alexander-Arnold. But if we have La Messia covering certain positions and we're okay, there is no reason for us to be looking at these free agents at all. Whether these La Messia players are unknown or known, if Barcelona is improving, then we are improving. Moving on towards the next question coming from Madden Season 3920. And he has stated, what made you start this Barcelona channel? So I did start this channel mainly because I just wanted to talk about FC Barcelona. I felt like I had a good amount of knowledge. And also what did really inspire me to finally say, okay, I need to do this now was when I saw Ansu Fati coming up at the age of 16 years old. It really did make me excited to see somebody like Ansu who was so young scoring goals every other game. And I knew that if Barcelona were truly going to be a great team again, I really wanted to follow that. And I wanted other people to follow that too, which is why I created this YouTube channel. Also, I did not like the idea of seeing so much toxic energy surrounding the club. I felt like people were being misinformed and that is why I had to step in and give further explanations. It's also a lot of fun too. Like I honestly, like this whole thing is a gift to know that I do get paid for just talking about my team. It's just insane. I'm super grateful. I would not be able to do it without you guys. And I think that at this point, this is going to be something that I am going to be doing for the rest of my life. Unless like something crazy happens. Like let's say for example, I get hired at a football club and they say that they need 100% of my attention every day, Monday through Friday or something like that, like I have to basically give up the channel, then yeah, maybe I would turn this channel down in order for me to like actually work within the sports industry instead of trying to talk from the outside. But if those opportunities never arise, then I'm just going to be having this channel for the rest of my life and just talk about Barcelona until I'm 95, 100 years old. Why? It is again, it's, it's just fun. It's a lot of fun. I never find this type of work stressful at all. So now let's move on towards the next question. That is sharp underscore gamer 9223. If it comes down to it, who do you think Barcelona should go for in 2025, Musiala or Liao? And what's your reason for whoever you choose? So usually when I say Liao, it's mostly because I'm always asked, who would you choose? Nico Williams or Liao? I would say Liao. But if you're going to tell me what player should Barcelona sign for sure, and you're not giving me this debate about Liao versus this player or Liao versus that player, if you're just telling me, go for it, Kevin, go for whoever you do want to sign, I will tell you Musiala. It has to be Musiala. Musiala is a player that I rate so highly. He is so effective. He is definitely going to be one of the best players in the world within these next two or three years. Like for sure, I do see this player as a Ballon d'Oro winner. And 
I do think that Barcelona have to have a piece of this. They have to. They have to lock down Musiala next summer, put in all the funds, give him the best salary. Musiala is that player and he slots perfectly on the left wing position. I want a team, a Barcelona team that contains Musiala, Pedri, La Minimal, because that, my friends, is something that you can dream of and is very much possible. And I hope that Hansi Flick has enough pull to make that happen. Moving on towards the next question, and that is WTF and T Lolo Lolo 1932. Do you think Barcelona should make a complete change in the team in 2025 by selling famous names such as Lewandowski, Ter Stegen, and maybe even Frankie de Jong? So I think that next summer, for sure, it is going to be the end of a lot of players because I think Hansi Flick is going to be saying, you know what? I'm proud with the team that I did carry in the beginning of my first season, but because Barcelona is much more flexible now because I want to rejuvenate the squad even more, Lewandowski for me is going to be a player that for sure is going to have to leave, like for sure. At the age of 37 years old, if not, then have him become a super sub because Barcelona have to move away from working with a player in their mid 30s. We need to have a striker that is at least 21 to 26 years old. We need somebody like that. As for Ter Stegen, I think that he will have continuity. And for Frankie, I'm going to be making a whole other separate video about this. But as for Frankie, this is for sure going to be his last season with Barcelona. If he does not pick it up, if he does not perform, and he, if he does not have a performance where we can say that was a Frankie de Jong performance, a Frankie de Jong that destroyed Real Madrid or destroyed Man City, whatever comes in our way this season. If he does not have something like that this season, for sure Hansi Flick is going to be saying, you know what? It's okay for us to sell Frankie de Jong. We don't really need him. If it's going to help us to reinforce other positions, let's do that. It is the end of Frankie, for sure. If he does not do anything, he needs to have a cup of great games and be consistent through the whole season. Moving on towards the next question coming from Alan Media. Shout out to Alan Media, who is very active on the Discord. What's up, bro? Hope you're doing well. But he did ask, what was the exact moment or moments that made you decide to make a YouTube channel? This kind of goes back to what I did answer earlier. That exact moment or moments, I would say, started back in 2019, in the beginning of 2019, because I was seeing so many toxic articles, toxic information to destroy FC Barcelona. I saw how Barcelona were trying to strive and get away from all this negative energy. I believe that 2019 was a year where Barcelona really had to wake up and say what currently is going on right now under President Bartomeu is not working well because we were a team that relied so much on Messi, relied so much on Luis Suarez. We got outclassed in the second leg against Liverpool. I'm like, this is unsustainable. Everything that has been going on with Barcelona is unsustainable and we're bound to break before we know it. Like we're going to have to break to be reborn. And I knew that back in 2019 and I knew that Barcelona were going to be entering a brand new era. And once again, because I knew and I sensed that Barcelona were going to go through that brand new era very soon because of the amount of difficulties we were going through, I'm like, I have to be part of this. I need to make a YouTube channel and make sure that the Barcelona fans do see Barcelona in a very different, more positive way. Moving on towards the next question, and that is Emedi Stone underscore UW9JM. What do you think about bringing back Oscar Minguesa by activating his 9 million euro release clause? I think he'll be a great substitute for Kunde since we need a good squad depth next season. So first of all, I cannot believe Minguesa is looking like Roberto Carlos out here. I thought it was the end of Minguesa. And I have always rated Minguesa. I just knew that Barcelona needed something better, I would say, because at that time back in 2022, Barcelona needed an upgrade. And that is why we got Jules Kunde and we moved away from Minguesa. And Minguesa ended up going to Celta Vigo. In his first season with Celta, he played 23 matches, zero goals and zero assists. Then he went on to the 2023-2024 season. He played 41 matches, scored two goals and provided three assists. And now today, in the season that we're in, with only four matches played, he has two goals and three assists. So he has six goal involvements within a span of four matches. And he looks very alive as a right back. I think that, yes, if he continues to go in this trajectory, Barcelona for sure should bring him back. Because if he truly scores goals, if he truly brings assists, and he attacks in the way that he does, like how we saw him against Osasuna, against Villarreal, against Valencia, against Alaves, we need a player like that. So for 9 million euros, for a player who might get at least 15 to 20 goal contributions at this rate, yes, bring Minguesa back. So now moving on towards the last question, and that is SEP underscore SRCE. Will Barcelona officially be a circus run by clowns if they go for Nico Williams again next summer after saying the Barcelona train only comes once? Join now or you'll never get the chance again. So first of all, I want to say that I find it a little strange that Nico Williams is underperforming in all of his games. He looks a little sad or sadder than usual. I don't know if he has some doubts about his choice and what he did because I have already said, and I'm going to say this multiple times, I do think that what Nico Williams did by saying, I reject Barcelona and I want to continue at Athletic Club, it is a big mistake. He made a huge mistake for his career. Yes, in some capacity, it did hurt Barcelona because we do need a real left winger today. I think that it hurts Nico Williams even more because I think that deep down, Nico Williams knew that he could have upped his level. He could have upped his career by joining FC Barcelona. He was just simply too emotional in the summer. And I don't think that is logical. You need to be logical, right? As a man, you need to be logical. You need to know what makes sense, not how do I feel. Now, once again, I respect 
respect when Nico Williams did because you know loyalty and faithfulness is hard to find but like dude you you know you know that in the next summer in 2025 things are going to look a lot different every transfer window there is always different and new opportunities what makes you think that Barcelona might go for you again with the amount of free agents that is going to be there I hope the agent of Nico Williams told him this or at least he was self-aware about this that next season looking at the market Barcelona will be maneuvering somewhere else and then Nico Williams is going to be saying okay I did what I had to do this season I played the Europa League what a fairy tale ending but then once he asked for a move away from Athletic Club now he can't get out because there's no options and his best option was FC Barcelona but only to find out that Barcelona are now moving somewhere else and now they have the Nike deal under wraps and they, they can sign big time left wing players it's going to be a sad thing to see I think it was a, a huge mistake for Nico Williams to reject us in that way even Deco confirmed it that he reject us and if Barcelona go for Nico Williams again next summer I don't think that they're gonna look like fools I just I strongly have belief that Barcelona won't go for him at all I just it's, it's just not gonna happen if they do once again it just does not cross my mind I don't think they're gonna look like clowns but it's just it doesn't cross my mind Barcelona won't, will not go for him with the amount of players that will be available they won't they won't go for him for sure and so that is it that is going to be wrapping up today's video thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one